Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I am bringing you, really this is going to be the last of the hashtag Art Journal Habit uh, 2017 challenge pages. This book will be done and over with and <laughs> we'll never see it again. Okay, it's going on the shelf. Maybe I'll look at it sometime next year. So this is the prompt for day 27. This is one of the ones that I missed when my computer was be misbehaving. And the prompt is sweet. And of course, you know, when you think of sweet, the first thing you think of is like cookies and candies and cake and pie and all that yummy stuff, which I absolutely love. I don't know about you. <laughs> Nothing better than a little bit of a sugar fix. And so I wanted to incorporate that, that into my page, but I also wanted to incorporate the idea of sweet as in, oh, how sweet, how cute, how adorable, that type of sweet. And I have an online friend named Dana Sanchez, and she has, she has a channel, I think. Um, I know she has a blog, but... I'm not sure she watches my videos, but I do follow her on um, Facebook and Instagram, and she has posted pictures that you could just die of sweetness. She got a hedgehog, a little baby hedgehog for her daughter, and it's her daughter's pet, and every once in a while she posts the cutest pictures you have ever seen. Hedgehogs are cute. They might even be cuter than kittens and puppies. They are so cute. You would not believe it. So I thought there really couldn't be anything sweeter than a hedgehog in a teacup. She has posted a picture. I think it was her or maybe it was her friend um, who does a photography business. Uh, uh, the, the hedgehog in a teacup. I mean, really? Could anything be sweeter than that? I don't think so. <laughs> so that's what I decided to make. So I started my page. Of course, this is a junk journal, and you can see how I made the junk journal in the, by clicking the link in the description box below. Um, stab binding using junk mail. Had to cover that up. So I did a coat of white gesso, and then I did a coat of uh, cerulean blue mixed with um, titanium white and kind of did like a blue background and then on the bottom I had this cute kind of a madras plaid napkin scrap left over and I thought it would make a cute tablecloth like if you were having uh, tea and cookies outside or something you know something like that on the English countryside or something I don't know <laughs> so I put that down at the bottom collage that on and then I also had a paper doily and I thought at a tea table there might be those cute crochet doilies that they would set the teapot and teacups on so I attached that as well using uh, fluid matte medium from Liquitex and then I have just these scraps of plain text paper from my computer when I print something you know when I print like a quote or something to put on a page to, to collage on I always have these little scraps left and they're just stacked over by my paper cutter and so I decided to use that lightweight paper to draw on to make my illustrations and then color and then I'll cut those out and collage them onto the paper so this is kind of kind of like illustrating kind of like coloring kind of like collaging uh, definitely mixed media because there's a lot of different things on here. So I made my drawing with a drawing pencil. My mechanical pencil that I love is still broken. I need to have someone engineeringly inclined look at it from my house. I do have engineers in my house, so <laughs> I'm going to have them try to fix it because it's it's not an inexpensive pencil, and I, I want it fixed. So then I, of course, went over it with the... Um, illustration pens from Faber-Castell Pitt pens, uh, different line widths and weights like you do when you do illustration. It makes it more interesting. So I used the brush pen on the outer edges and then I used, I think, the medium nib, bullet nib and maybe also the small bullet nib to finish 
drawing in my illustration and then now I am using Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons. These are made by Caronda Ash and um, they are awesome. I love them. They're a highly pigmented crayon and the way that I like to apply it is to just put the color right onto the paper and then blend it. Now you could use water to blend it but in the case of this particular illustration I know that I'm going to be collaging it onto a page. I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to I'm going to get it wet with more matte medium. So I am using fluid matte medium and that's what that pile of white stuff is there on my palette matte thing. And I'm using that to blend instead of water. And it's not changing the color because it's just it's a clear liquid. Sometimes I use acrylic paint to do this. A lot of times I do because I like to lighten up the color and blend it a little bit. But um, this time I'm just using the matte medium on just a regular brush. I, I get my brush wet occasionally just to make it more pliable by dipping it in the water that's next to me. But mostly I'm just using the matte medium. And that helps me blend my colors and also <clears throat> will dry permanent and then it won't smear when I go to, to collage it onto the page. So that's something that you should give, you know, a thought to if you're using a water soluble medium, medium of some sort, watercolor or, you know, fluid something like a glimmer mist or something like that that you might want to paint with in a watercolor way or you know anything that you think might smear on your page once you collage it uh, if you if it's a blendable thing you might want to try blending it with matte medium works pretty good I think that the white acrylic paint mixed with water might be just slightly easier to blend but the matte medium does work as well <clears throat> so the in <clears throat> excuse me the inspiration for this teacup is one that my mom has. She collects teacups, or she has in the past, and she thinks they're pretty and she puts them on a shelf. I drink tea. I don't necessarily collect teacups. <laughs> I like big mugs, actually, for my tea because I drink a lot of tea, um, both cold tea and hot tea. I'll, I like that better than coffee. So I even have this cinnamon tea that I've been putting in my Keurig machine. Oh, it's so yummy. It kind of burns your tongue a little bit, but it's so yummy. Hot cinnamon tea. And um, anyway, this cup has pansies on it. Hers has pansies on it. And so I tried to make a cup and saucer with pansies. I'm not sure that my pansies look very pansy-like. I, I'm i going from memory. I'm not sure. I think that they ha that's what they look like. Anyway, if they're not pansies, then they're some other kind of flower, okay? <laughs> and then I, of course, have my little hedgehog in there, and I color everything. And then for the edge of the cup and the bottom of the cup and the handle of the cup, I'm going to use gold Posca pen because the cup that I'm thinking of has like a gold painted handle and stuff. Um, I don't know if it's called gilded or what, but that's what it has. So it's a very fine china, very light cup. So once I cut this out, which I'm not going to force you to watch that because this video is long as it is, and uh, of course I'm trimming up the pages, getting that excess off, then I'm going to put this right on top of the doily. And you have a hedgehog in a teacup, in a pansy teacup. On a page. What could be sweeter than that? <laughs> uh, for attaching this, I'm using the Liquitex Matte Gel Medium because it will help me stick it down better over all those bumps. Um, the page is bumpy itself because I blistered it on the other side when I was working on it. Um, also, I've got a doily on there. I've got the plaid tablecloth napkin on there so I wanted to make sure that everything stuck down really well so then I need other stuff like this is a big page this is probably one of the biggest pages both sides of the paper are full size of the book so this is like one of the largest pages in the book so I'm gonna need a lot of other stuff 
So I decided, well, the page is about sweet. And if you were to go to high tea, what would you have with your tea? You would have cookies or biscuits, depending on what you want to call them. <laughs> Here in the United States, we call them cookies. I think in England, the only cookies are chocolate chip and everything else is a biscuit, as far as I understand. So I'm drawing some uh, heart-shaped cookies that are sandwich cookies that have jam in the middle and icing on the top with a little bit of sprinkles. And then I also have some smaller heart-shaped iced sugar cookies. And then, of course, we have the French macaron. Not a macaroon. It's a macaron. Because a macaroon is that coconut thing that's made with meringue, <laughs> which I love. I love coconut macaroons, but they're not macarons. Two different things completely. When I went to tea in California um, a couple weekends ago for the fundraiser, it was high tea. That was the first time I ever had a French macaron, and they are good. Um, I had a pistachio one, I had a hazelnut one, and I had one that kind of tasted like some type of berry, like raspberry or something. So they do come in flavors. That's the reason the colors are different, I guess. Uh, first time I ever had one. I've seen them made on, on Food Channel lots of times. It's a process because you have to let them dry and all this stuff. It's kind of a long process. So <clears throat> I also drew a little tea bag because um, you might need a tea bag if you were going to make tea. And then I made a pitcher for milk because I drink my tea with sweetener and cream or milk. That's the way that I prefer it. So I've got everything that I might need for a lovely tea here on the table. So then, oh, here's the other thing is um, that I'm drawing is sugar cubes because you need to sweeten it. I actually use Splenda myself, but most people would use sugar or sugar cubes. So I made a plate of those. This uh, page took a while, so I have um, sped up some times to eight times, some of the areas to eight times fast, some are four times fast, and I've trimmed out things like cutting and drawing and things like that so that I can shrink it down to, to my my own personal limit of 20 minutes-ish. <clears throat> so once they're all done with illustrating, then I go ahead and color them. Same method as before using the Neocolor 2 water-soluble crayons. All the materials that I use will be in the description box below. And if you use one of my links and purchase something, not even necessarily what what I linked, but anything that you purchase after you've used my link, I get a few cents from Amazon. I'm an Amazon associate. So that always helps me if you do that. And I'm always grateful. Sometimes people tell me that they have used my links. And I'm always very happy about that because that little check that comes every once in a while is always useful to buy more art supplies since I am providing a free entertainment here for you. So I decorated the milk or creamer little, you know, jug, whatever it's called, with the same same pansies. I'm coloring it the same color and I am also using the gold Posca pin on that to add the gilding and then the rest of them are just uh, plates. So I didn't put any pansies or anything anything on them just like saucers and plates so the only time that I really used any different colors than my original uh, illustration is on the cookies I was trying to make a nice bake a nice golden bake on the cookies <laughs> so I was picking out different colors trying to figure out what color is the color of golden baking um, and that yellowish light colored um, crayon there that's the closest thing I had to ivory and and for those of you who don't watch how to cake it with Yolanda Gamp you won't understand this but whenever she's like almost every cake that she does when she does the painting at the end of the the fancy cakes to like you know give them highlights and shadows she uses the color ivory and her her assistant for her YouTube channel Jocelyn is constantly teasing her she's like I'm going to use a color and Jocelyn says oh is it going to be ivory <laughs> so apparently the color of a nice bake on something is ivory so I 
I tried I, the first color I tried was a darker brown and it seemed to make the cookies a little bit too done but it was okay on the edges but then on the inside I used the closest crayon I had to ivory I, I know most of you won't get that but if you watch how to cake it you'll get it <laughs> I watch it every week faithfully I love those cakes I wished I could make cakes like that she does the coolest stuff so the plate of cookies or slash biscuits had to be trimmed in half well not half but had to be a part of it cut off because <clears throat> it's going to end up being in the crease there was just no other choice so i'm attaching all of these the same way that i did before with the um the matte gel medium putting it on the back of the paper as well as on the page itself to really get a good adhesion say that three times fast adhesion that's a hard word to say so I've got all my things and I've got them glued down and I thought that the background was boring boring <laughs> so I decided to stencil it usually you would stencil something before you put the collage elements on but not me no way I'm gonna stencil it after the fact <laughs> so I think I think I did pretty well I didn't I did get a little bit of the green on my uh, cookie plate and I had to kind of wipe it off a little bit but I just basically looked through the stencil to make sure that I wasn't hitting uh, the things that were in the front and it worked pretty well I mixed um, some light green with some white and just it's just like a almost kind of like a wallpaper background with this leaf stencil I like this leaf stencil a lot so it's one of my 12 by 12s I don't use them very often and then I gave that thing a long dry and touched up in areas where I needed to um, if some paint got on something or if something got peeled away or whatever I touched it up then my final step the final thing to add was some words so I printed these out on my printer of course and now I have another scrap piece of lightweight paper that I can illustrate on at some point in the future <laughs> And I varied fonts and sizes to just try to make it a little bit more interesting. But it is exactly, as I said, what could be more sweet than a hedgehog in a teacup? I just don't think there's anything sweeter than that. But if you disagree and you think that there's something sweeter than that, you just go ahead and tell me. Comments below. <laughs> Most of the time people agree with me, but sometimes they don't. And that's always interesting. It makes me think. <laughs> so I'm attaching these with the same glue as before just putting it onto the page and then sticking my thing down in it and kind of going over the top um, these are printed on an inkjet printer so there is a potential for smearing and that's the reason that I didn't use a more liquidy medium because I would get it too wet and then the black would smear so the final thing I did and this is this might be the last thing and it might seem dull and boring but I tell you what it makes a huge difference and you should do it you should all do it if you're listening to me out there you people who were sticking things to things please do this <laughs> take some sort of something and add a shadow around your cutout pieces that you've attached to the page please please do it whether it's magazine collage, whether it's um, collaging with napkins, whether it's your own illustrations, whether it's uh, you've cut out something from a children's coloring book, colored it and attached it, I don't care. Please add the shadow. It will make you happy and it will make me happy. It also works really nice around the words too. And the thing that I'm using is a Fabric Castell pit pin in warm gray and I'm blending it with my finger because of course this is a sealed page so I hope you've enjoyed this if you did please leave me a comment subscribe turn on your notifications share uh, thumbs up all those things because that really helps me out with my channel growing and helps other people find me so that's it for me thanks bye bye